Well, for lymphomas in general, the, the surveillance is in, in terms of two aspects. Uh, one is the disease itself and its recurrence. Second is the side effects on the short term and the long term. So for the disease itself, uh, the guidelines suggest you know, seeing the patients on a regular basis, physical exam. Uh, there is controversy about like the value of repeating tests like PET scan, they may not be indicated, uh, or CAT scans after the first couple of years may not be indicated. So there is a surveillance related to the disease itself, but there is surveillance also related to the complications of the treatment on the long term and the short term. Um, the, uh, again, the rate of therapy rated AML or the incidence is low, but it's probably fair enough to have some surveillance with blood counts on a regular basis uh, uh, with annual visits at least down the road uh, and at least to keep that in mind that that's a possibility. Um, obviously there are other things that one could look into based on clinical uh, presentations such as development of congestive heart, heart failure from treatment. Uh, uh, for lymphoma. With CHOP chemotherapy, uh, the toxicities on the short term could be uh, during the treatment in terms of myelosuppression, developing febrile neutropenia, uh, complications related to the therapy while the patients are undergoing the treatment, development of congestive heart failure. Uh, on the long term, with this particular therapy for lymphoma, uh, one would worry about development of therapy-related AML uh, or MDS. Uh, CHOP, or nowadays when we combine it with rituximab for lymphoma patients is a curative treatment. So most of the time we are able to cure those diffuse large B-cell lymphomas. And then we are dealing with the sequelae of some of the treatments. Uh, I would say on the long term, although again the, the incidence is low, therapy rated AML or MDS is the one that we worry about.